Hi guys, and welcome to Motion Gaming. Today we will be covering the best tips and tricks that you need to get more kills and increase your win rates in Blood Hunt. In this video I will be covering everything from best spawn locations to gameplay strategies, but if you have any questions, ask me in the comments below. I will be covering the best and worst weapons in the game soon, so make sure you are subscribed so you don't miss that. Now before you even start a match, you will need to know which vampire or archetype you are going to play. Archetype selection. The choice of which vampire to play completely depends on your playstyle. Trying all of them in the beginning is best, but my favourite and suggested one for aggressive players is Vandal. To simplify the choice, the first couple are for aggressive play, the second two are more tactical, and the last two are for support. Each have their benefits and flaws and you will need to understand how each works at some point to better counter them in Prague. If you play solos, you are set to go. In trios, however, each player will have their turn to pick, so prepare a possible second or third choice mentally, in case your favourite has been taken. Spawn Selection Unlike other battle royales, there is no jumping from a ship to land. Instead, you select a desired spot on the map, and the game will allocate the nearest available spawn location to it. You will see a preview of where enemies want to spawn near you, and a full spawn map will be revealed once the timer has finished. You can change your mind as many times as you want during the countdown, but I would advise picking a location quickly to secure your favourite spot. Points of Interest There are multiple points of interest on the map. They are gun shops, pharmacies, antique shops, entities, and high tier loot areas. Each contain a certain type of loot, and will all likely attract more players than other locations. Gun shops will supply you with four cabinets, with two spawns each containing firearms or armour. Pharmacies are similar, but will supply you with syringes and blood pouches, and antique shops will contain melee weapons and red gas neutralizers. Each of these shops can be accessed by opening a door, but it will trigger an alarm alerting any nearby enemies to your presence. These shops are favourite places of mine to go early game, but have obvious risks attached. Entities are NPC soldiers who protect a high tier loot cache, and will shoot you on sight. Very well I might add. They are powerful enemies and shouldn't be underestimated at the start of the match. In my opinion, it is better to forget about these caches unless someone else has done the dirty work for you. High tier loot locations seem to do exactly what they say and give you a higher chance of finding better tier weapons, although this doesn't seem to be a huge difference and I would rather go to a spot I know well on the map than pick a high tier area just for the loot potential. High tier loot spots are not worth it over guaranteed weapons. Tips from spawn. My first objective when I spawn is always find some weapons. The starting pistol can be useful to defend yourself, but almost any other weapon you can find will outmatch it, and don't even get me started on fists. I generally try to aim for a weapon shop, even though the risk is high. If I secure the closest spawn, I have a high chance of getting there first, and at least picking up a good weapon or two to defend myself from attackers who might still be using a pistol. I always try to go for a combination of close and medium range weapons, such as an assault rifle or light machine gun, paired with a shotgun or silent submachine gun. I don't use melee weapons often, but if you are stuck after using a movement ability, they can hit very hard. After your first loot. Once you have succeeded in looting a few weapons and supplies, I would suggest putting a bit of distance from you and your starting location. Most people will be on the hunt for loot, and being inside a small shop isn't your best bet at survival. Movement is key in this game, and giving yourself options is a great start. Scout out the nearby area. Be the third party in a fight, or push someone who has been marked, although be mindful that other players might be doing the same. Learn when a fight is not going your way. It's better to fall back, heal up, and attack from a better position, than try and land those last few shots for the down. Remember, even when you get the enemy downed, you're still not safe. Other players are likely pushing the sound of a fight, and you should make survival your priority over finishing a downed enemy. Small things like finishing a reload or popping an armor plate could save your life if you start to get shot while executing a down player. Making sure you will survive is more important than finishing your kill. Overall game strategy. I prefer to play aggressive in the early portion of the game. High risk, high reward works well at the beginning when you haven't invested any time searching for loot or getting some kills. Once you have more or less secured your spawn area, I would start hunting for supplies that you are short on. Street level is great for this containing many vehicles with supplies in, and humans to gain extra cooldowns with. Which abilities you decide to favour will depend on your playstyle. Being an aggressive player myself, cooldowns for my abilities are key, and melee damage is always never useful for me. Be mindful that you can only have 3 upgrades in the beginning, 
and you will have to execute downed enemies to unlock more for a total of 7. I will generally try to get at least 2 upgrades on each ability cooldown, and 1 health regen, but it really depends on what is available during the game, as these will disappear quickly if you are playing trios. Once you have gained some supplies, take to the rooftops for some more scouting. At this point, the zone will have shrinked considerably, and more players will be finding each other. Now is a good time to grab a sneaky third party or two, but bear in mind that a lot more players will be in earshot, and this can go badly quickly. It's at this point you really want to slow down your gameplay compared to where the game. Choose your fights carefully, your aim here is to give yourself the best setup for endgame situations, and not use all those supplies you spent time gathering. Position is difficult in this portion. The edge of the zone will generally have you meet less players, but will limit your escape options, and the middle of the zone might have you being shot from many angles at once. Even if you get downed, don't give up, especially at this point in the game. Third parties come along extremely fast, and there is a likelihood that even mid-execution, your enemy might get shot and decide to flee instead. The incoming threat will generally be focused on the moving target, and this might give you some valuable time to escape or hide. Remember that using your focus ability will highlight enemies, so hiding in a bush might not work as well as you first thought. As soon as the second to last zone has been shown on the map, this is the one that will bring a large zone down to a single building or two, you should immediately be thinking about your placement. Getting to the final zone early and defending from incoming players is easier than pushing an already contested building, but this will give your location away and open you up to flanks. Don't hesitate to use any environmental elements to your advantage. I once shot some entities in the distance, just to alert them to other players near them. The extra damage goes a long way when they have multiple buildings to cross before getting to the safe area. Playing the high ground at this point is important, but don't hesitate to give it up if you're in a bad situation. You can always climb around a different area if needed, and use some red gas neutralizers to get a clever flank on someone. At this point, you don't want to be the first to engage a gunfight. The ideal situation is that three players remaining, you can pinpoint the last two and get in there when both players have been weakened, giving you an easy finish. Be extra careful of any enemies that were downed but not finished here. I've had some amazing comebacks in the last 10 to 20 seconds of the match. Conclusions Blood Hunt makes great use of movement and verticality, which I adore in shooter games. Mastering each archetype's abilities and general movement is key to success in your fights, and I hope that this video has helped. Please consider subscribing for more shooter content. I've had a great time playing this game, and we'll be covering it in more detail soon.